By now, Echoing Void has come out long enough ago that we have a pretty inside and out understanding about how all of the new gear, enchants, and mechanics work. One thing, though, that has still remained somewhat of a mystery to many players is exactly how Void Strike works. We've gained a better understanding, such as knowing that its multiplier takes time to build up, and attacking with a weapon that has Void Strike enchanted on will reapply the buff and reset the multiplier. So, faster attack speed equals a lower multiplier per hit. But how exactly does Void Strike affect each weapon with their different top attack speed with this information? I've given out some average numbers in the past. 189% more damage for an Anchor, and 115% more for Starless Knight. Though, those were just eyeballing some hits and weren't actually completely accurate percentages. This didn't stop my numbers from being repeated by others again, and so again, I wanted to get to the bottom of this to get more accurate numbers. That way, at least the info being repeated wouldn't be misleading. However, figuring this out is incredibly tricky, and it's why just eyeballing a few hits doesn't work for giving an accurate number. This is because, even if we keep our attack speed completely static so that every combo's hits are hitting at the exact same rhythm over and over and over again, I found that every hit has between 2-3 to three damage values from Void Strike, which for the most part appear randomly. But some weapons combos tend to have one value appear more often than the other, and other weapon combos, like the Anchor, actually have a consistent pattern of medium roll, high roll, high roll, low roll, repeat. Because of this, I had to first measure out the total base damage of a weapon's combo, and then I performed between 5 and 10 full combos with that weapon, and let me tell you, doing that with battle stabs and rapiers, complete pain in the butt to do. Especially with all those fast numbers and the overlapping purple, you just can't accurately see each damage value, it was just a mess, and I never want to do it again. But I did all of that to average out the combo's damage, and then used that information to find the average increase and these are the results that I got. The results were even more surprising than I thought. Originally, I thought that anything Tempest Knife Speed or Faster wouldn't use Void Strike as well as Crit, but as I tested it more thoroughly and gained more understanding, I began to suspect that even Daggers could use it well. However, I never expected these results. Keep in mind that I had conducted these tests with a Death Cap Mushroom in armor that had a plus 25% increase in attack speed, I wanted to use top melee speed to find the lowest average of Void Strike. That way, if you were only using a Mushroom for attack speed on your build, you know that your Void Strike is giving you this much extra damage and more. The exception was Mauler's and Dancer's Sword. The built-in level 1 rampaging gives a 10% chance for a brief 50% increase in attack speed that only affects the base speed. So I averaged them to a 5% total speed and DPS boost. This worked out for me since I could get that 5% boost by swapping out my plus 25% attack speed armor, which I was using spider armor, for one that had frenzied instead for its 30% speed boost. If you've seen my video about stunning and how good it is on weapons based on attack speed from slowest to fastest, you'll notice that this list is the reverse of that, and the damage increase of Void Strike is very proportional to the increase in attack speed on that list. As for the weapons themselves, Fighter's Bindings made sense with their 15.1 hits a second, 32.5% is actually better than Sharpness, since, while Sharpness is 33% more damage, it is a flat modifier that only affects physical damage, while Void Strike multiplies all damage that a mob takes. This would include enchants like Shockwave, Swirling, and Thundering. From testing Void Strike on my Whirlwind at point blank, the damage from Shockwave actually got a good multiplier from it. So, the same would go to any combination of Thundering, Shockwave, and Swirling on Fighter's Bindings. This applies to Daggers as well gauntlets too. Sickles, coral blades, rapiers, anything that uses thundering benefits from Void Strike, and especially coral blades since they get more than 95% extra combo damage from swirling and over 70% from shockwave, while cutlass weapons can also use shockwave and swirling almost as well as fighters' bindings do in terms of damage. And speaking of rapiers, I was actually surprised that Void Strike was a higher boost than crit on them. I'm thinking that it must be from the brief hit delay just before the last hit of the combo, and the even longer delay after it. This makes Void Strike the best enchant to pair with Thundering on it, since Thundering is more than double the weapon's base DPS, and Void Strike would multiply that on top of the weapon's damage as well. Also, what I've noticed is that, even though Echo does give an extra faster attack to your weapon's combo, this doesn't affect Void Strike the way that you would think it does. The increased speed of the hit does not matter. Whatever hit was echoed, it'll have the same 2 or 3 damage rolls that the original hit would have with Void Strike, so you could get 2 high rolls in a row. 
Some weapons have technically the same attack speed. Maces and spears have 3.8 hits a second, pickaxes and glaives have 3.2, hammers, soul knives, and claymores have 2.5, but not only were these numbers rounded either up or down to the nearest tenth, but some of these combos have different variations in the speed of each hit that averages to those hits per second. They're not uniform in speed, which can affect Void Strike somewhat. And you'll notice how I said earlier that my original estimations for Void Strike on a Starless Knight was 115% more damage, and 189% more for an Anchor. That was close, but you see the average brings them down a bit. I know that others will repeat what I say without any work on their part, because they trust me, but when they get an attitude like it's something they could easily do as well, and that what I do isn't a big deal, it shows just how much they underestimate and how little they understand what work goes into getting info this accurate. Anyway, aside from the raw extra damage that you'll get from Void Strike with an Anchor, and any other damage increase of 50% or more, two weapons that stand out here are Vine Whip and Encrusted Anchor. Their poison not only scales up with most damage buffs, those being like Sharpness, Armor buffs, Cowardice, Reckless, Strength Potion, Shadow Brew, Pain Cycle, etc., and of course Poison Focus as well, they also get a massive damage increase from Void Strike. As long as you don't reset the multiplier, the damage of the poison will increase with every tick from Void Strike until the multiplier maxes out. You can easily one-shot any enemy with the poison from this, and with enough buffs you can one-shot even the tankiest bosses too. I've done so with both weapons. Vine Whip and Encrusted Anchor would be the king and queen of Void Strike use here. This is all just to show not only just how good Void Strike is on a slow weapon like Encrusted Anchor, but how effective it is on average on every weapon at top melee attack speed, so that you can use this knowledge, also coupled with my video talking about Committed, to even better determine which enchants that you would want to use, since you can see more or less how they measure up to each other. Basically, Void Strike on anything except for Fighter's Bindings, and even then it can be worth it while running indirect damage like Shockwave or Swirling or Thundering, because it's really good at doing that. And it can even go a long way, especially against bosses, to have an offhand Void Strike weapon solely to greatly boost the damage of your main non-Void Strike weapon too. And that's all for now. Until next time.